Mr. Nelson, you're in the house. What's up, buddy? Hey, Rich. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, man. Dude, it is my pleasure. I'm excited for people to hear your story because everyone who surfs around here or lives around here already knows you, but there's a lot of people who visit town and they see you all the time, but they don't know the story behind <laughs> the man <laughs> who's out there ripping backside all the time <laughs> and going backside instead of frontside because you're so good at surfing backside. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm teasing you because most people go frontside. That's their preferred direction and yours is just the opposite. Well, I like frontside still, but I feel more comfortable on the backside. Why is that? Is it because you had to walk to surf so far when you were a kid <laughs> and you had just went to Pelada and went backside? <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. I, I learned it in Pelada, actually, you know, so Pelada is like a point break. We just, we just figured it out. So that's why. I feel comfortable on the backside, but I like frontside, too. Every type of wave. <laughs> yeah, I got you. You're an equal opportunity wave rider. <laughs> but you definitely charge harder. You go deeper in the barrel. And your Wakatas are more vertical backside. And it's confusing. I feel comfortable backside. You are awesome to surf around. And it's been fun getting to know you over the years. So I wanted to share your story on this platform. So let's get started. Give us, uh, introduce yourself and give us a little biography on you. My name is Nelson Acosta Lopez and I grew up here in Osada. I have 32 years old and I am a surf coach. Nice. Now you've been a surf coach for how long? Over 10 years. Okay. So you've been doing this a while. I wonder how many people you've taught to surf. Oh man, <laughs> a lot of people. Sometimes I don't even remember like names and I just remember faces when I see them coming back. I know some of them like. People like super, like they come down a lot down here. Mm -hmm. So many good friends by in the state, but some other people come like every like two or three years. So it's hard to remember. Right. But yeah, man, I've been teaching a lot of people yeah, for all around the world and I love to share with them. It's a pretty cool job. You've been a surf instructor over 10 years now, but now you have your own company. So uh, what's the name of the company? Living in Stoke Nosara. Now, I why is it called Living Stoke Nosara? I think I know. Because it's a meaning about... The Pura Vida, you know, the Pura Vida is the, you know, the Pura life with the old Costa Rican we recognize. So living is stuck. I translate about the same thing. Yeah, it fits. Yeah, that's yeah. a good name for you and your business. <laughs> Thank now, you. Now, you have a car now. I just bought a truck, yeah, to do like surf trips and adventure tours around the coast. That made me happy and sad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because cars break here. Oh, man. Yeah, don't tell me that. <laughs> I am telling you that cars come here to die. Thanks to the road. <laughs> Thanks to, but, you know, it's part of the... the it's, part, it's the experience, right? Yeah. I've had so many issues with cars over the years. Yeah. Nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah. Like, just nothing. It's just, part, it's just part of it. Man, it's my first car. So, yeah, I'm learning a lot already. I've been learning. I got this car for eight, eight months already. Huh? Yeah. Have you gotten stuck uh, going through any rivers? Yeah, in the rainy season, yeah, I got stuck on the river. <laughs> How did I guess? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. I think what I told you the history before. Huh? So what happened? I went to surf Ostinal and I take a shortcut. Uh-huh. And it just happened like a big rain, but... I, I made it through on the way and the way and on my way, uh -huh. but on my way back, oh, it was, the tide change or the more water came down. It was maybe a little bit more water. So man, I tried to, I put the car half four by four. So I tried to, it was not that deep, but it was like a street of soft. Uh -huh. And yeah, I got a stock and the water started coming on the car, but I got to call some friend and like seven o'clock on the dark. Yeah, it was. But, were, you, were you freaking out? Not really. I was kind of worried. I worry, but at the same time, I try to like calm down. Now that you have a truck, are you going and surfing all the other waves much more? I try to because, you know, Guiones start getting pretty crowded. It's lately. pretty crowded. So I try to go other secret spots, you know. Mm -hmm. When I don't have lessons in Guiones, I go also on my own. I like to go with friends to surf like some spot. And also, it's part of that why I start my company. Because mm. I want to take... People do lessons or like trips, other breaks around here. Like people doesn't know much. Guiones is a super nice break, and now it, a lot of people is rec recognized by a lot of people. So yeah, it start pretty it's pretty crowded, and you know this this town is growing up. What type of clients are you looking for? Are you looking for beginners, for intermediates? Like what's what's the right clientele for you? Honestly, I do all. I can do beginners, intermediates. One part of my my idea is get more like a intermediate coach you know mm. you've been you've been pushing people into waves for a long time is it sometimes more fun 
to work with an intermediate because you can work on more advanced maneuvers. And I like to teach more intermediate and sometimes. Beginner, sometimes it's fun. Do it because, you know, people get stuck, you know, when they're standing up the board for the first time. Ah, it's a good, good feeling too. So, uh, yeah, I like both, really. Do you think that there's a market for people looking for more advanced coaching? Giannis is pretty like one beginner, good break to teach beginners. Yeah, it really is. And intermediate too. But when you are more than an intermediate level, you want to try to surf other type of wave. Mm, that's you know? true. That's true. That you're You're right about that. What do you think is the most common mistake people make trying to learn how to surf? Dropping in other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the biggest one. So explain that to someone. Actually, let me ask you this. Most people know what dropping in is. What do you do if you're paddling back out and there's like three or four people that look like any one of them can catch the wave, but you're paddling out and you don't know which direction to go? What do you do then? If I can avoid then I will paddle through the white water, you know, because... Mm -hmm. If they kind of know how to surf, they're going to go to the to the clean face. So that is the rule in surfing, you know? That's the rule. You always paddle through towards the white water. You don't want to come on out. And if you am too late and they're going to run over me, man, I will dish my board out. <laughs> I don't have another option. That's my new policy. <laughs> now, now that Guiones is crowded, if there's five people coming on a wave and I can't tell, I'm not going to get hit anymore. I'm just going to swim and r hit, hit my board, board whatever. <laughs> so be it. But if it's an experienced surfer on the inside, always go into the white water yeah. and take the hit and go under it. If it's a really inexperienced though surfer, though, I actually go to the outside because they're not going to make the line and they're just going to hit you if you go in. It seems like it just depends on the level of experience of the person riding. Man, but honestly... I seen it. People, they've been surfing for a long time. People doesn't know in that situation. And it's like a simple thing, you know? And people doesn't know that rule. They can throw right. the white water and they know. Well, it happens to me before, you know? I got an argument with some guys. They uh -huh. know how to surf and they say, no, I don't have time to go around you. And you were, you came too fast or something like that, you know? Well, that's it. That, that That's one Sim of the reasons I'm bringing it up right now. Yeah, is, that's uh, just a simple rule. And it's a rule in surfing if you like go and like books or something yeah this is one of the rule the scary part is if you have five beginners dropping in oh uh, yeah then who knows what to do it's different history yeah <laughs> it is guionis has gotten pretty crowded so what else like what message would you have for people who are visiting here or people who surf here like what uh what are you seeing going on out there in the crowds well honestly we try to like um get a spot for like surf school and other stuff for like experienced surfers, you know. Mm. We mostly teach lessons by the south end, like Coconut Harris and like Safari Surf School and all this and the south part. Mm -hmm. And normally the peak, the more experienced surfing, they, they serve by Harmony, you know, by uh, the hotel in front. Too. So, yeah, my message is depend, you know, the surf level they are. Like if they are beginner, they never take lessons before, better they, sh they should take lessons and go with like uh, experienced so the instructor, or if you they are experienced surfer, go away from what is the surf schools, you know, and then they're not going to hit with someone. The people coming into town, are most of them experienced surfers or are most of them very inexperienced? Like what, what are you seeing right now? I see everything, you know. Experience Across the board. Like, yeah, a lot of people on the water, everything, beginners, intermediate, good surfer, everything. I cannot say like more beginners or more experience. For Living Stoked, what is your main client right now? Like what's the, as you're, as you're just getting going, like is, is your focus to get to those intermediates or do you want to take whatever you can do? Because I know you can coach it all. I know yeah. that, but I'm trying to find out. So anyone listening, we can kind of know what you're targeting, like what's your preferred client? I want to do like surf adventure and surf trip down the coast and okay. do like the surf coach. Now I prefer more like intermediate. So I, I don't have to like, I have to worry less, you know, about they can get yeah. like, they can get in trouble to hit someone. Mm -hmm. So they can run over somebody. We can check out more waves too. Yeah. And also, yeah, we can surf other, other type of wave and we can do more like video, videos analysis. I want to focus more like in intermediates. There's Medium. a good market emerging there because a lot of the people who come to Nosara, they come back yeah. and they've been coming for a couple of years and a couple of trips and now they're getting a little bit higher level and you can transition those 
people who were learning years ago, now you can take yeah. them up the next level. There's not too many local Ticos doing that right now. Yeah, that's why I, I want to do that. Because it's a lot of surf school, to be honest. Yeah, there are. I, I, how so, many are there? What, 22? Something like that. 24 or something? 20, like more than 20 for sure. Yeah, no, That's a really good idea, yeah. man. Some people been telling me, you should get a location, and, you know, and, but I don't want to have That means location. expenses. Yeah, it's expensive, and I don't know, man. I can Now is the easy part, like, you can work online, too. Mm -hmm. get clients by you know so you can build up your instagram yeah, and, and get my, after it yeah website and like emails and all this stuff we're getting a lot more uh photographers around here to get good footage so that helps with your advertising yeah. but if people go out on a surf trip with you they can get a lesson with you they can also do video footage yeah. and you can arrange photography and yeah. all that good stuff yeah all that so I full service arrange. essentially yeah full service boards do they need to bring their own boards or can you get those both if Either they way. have their own board it's good if you know i can find a board for them too Man, right yeah, on. A uh, full thing. I got a cooler. I got some snack on the trips all the time. I like to involve the surf culture with the Costa Rican culture. Too. Right. Let people try a pipa. <laughs> yeah. God's pipa Gatorade. Food. Yeah. Empanadas. Yeah. Oh, if you go them. north, you got to yeah. hit up the empanadas. Yeah. And you have to stop by Austin Island and try those empanadas. Magic. They're <laughs> solid. Surfing. Yeah, really it's good. so sad whenever the light's not on when you're driving by if they're closed or they don't have them. It's like, oh, oh, man. But yeah, you know, this is the, the stop by when you go to the north. Hey, what's your favorite wave? Not let's no, not teaching. To surf? Yeah. Which, if you had to pick one wave that you had to surf, which was which one is it? And you can go as far north as Avianes and as far south as Cameronal. In between Avianes and Cameronal, what's your favorite wave? Marbella. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Marbella. Uh, also Witches Rock, but you don't give me that far. Nope, that's too far north. I love Witches Rock and Marbella, Marbella. Yeah, it's super fun, like short break. I, actually, I <laughs> went there like four days ago. Mm -hmm. I take some client, man, and it was so fun. It was not many people out locally. It was low tide and it was like picking really, really well. Really? We got some nice pictures that day. Yeah, we take, we take a photographer with us and they were so stuck. Wow. And I think it was a kid from, from San Francisco. He was a good surfer. He was like young kid and his dad. Yeah, and they have a great time on Bahia. That's awesome. It was the best way they surf in Costa Rica. It's a pretty good way. They, they were they were the first time here too. So. The, are, were the locals nice to you or are they kind of grumpy? No, they're nice. They're nice to me down there in Marbella. I got some good friends in Marbella. Yeah, Costa Rica, everybody's nice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that subject, what wave in Costa Rica is the least friendly? Well, on the Caribbean side. Okay. Salsa Brava. Well, also in yeah, Playa, that was a heavy. Also in Playa Negra, it's like some like people live there, like they are no Costa Rican and they they been living there for a long time. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, man, sometimes they think they own the way, but it's a point break and it's a right hander, you know. Mm -hmm. So they think they own the way, and sometimes if you came with more people, they they looking at you like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I probably. I feel a little bit like hard vibe in Playa Negra. Yeah, I try not go there much, you know. That's, it's an amazing wave. Yeah, I like Playa Negra a lot. Has a little edge. Yeah, you're right. The, lo the localism has gotten a little has an edge to it. Uh, Hunky all too. Some of the actually Hunky all is nice again. For a while, there were some boneheads who <laughs> who yeah. moved to Hunky all and they were real dorks. Yeah, yeah, quite frankly, and I don't say that about many people. There were a couple of guys who were like. Let's be mean to everyone and scare them away. <laughs> yeah. And that's not Pura Vida. That's not Costa no. Rica. And that's one thing about Guiones. As crowded as it is, people are kind. And actually, I want to give a shout out to, to you and a couple others. I've seen circumstances where someone was taking too many waves or maybe they didn't know how to surf well or they just didn't fit in, like things were off. I've seen you go over and talk to them in a nice way without yelling. Like I've seen you do that and say... Hey, listen, it's not like that here without like fighting because I'm where I'm from in Florida. If there's waves, we don't have waves very often. So people are like snipping and arguing in California. The lineup's very, a lot of arguments in here. It's not like that. You guys do a good job of yeah. protecting this place. Yeah. You know, I seen it like guys, like having a big fight here in Guinness, you know, oh. and it's bad. It's horrible because you, yeah, they yelling hard and it's a super bad. I, I got a couple like argument, like with guys on the water and, and I feel bad after that, you know, it's like a <laughs> no bad, but it's like, oh man, like, you know, I got sad at the end of the, because it's not pura vida. Right. I like to like come out of the water, like everybody like hands and like, oh man, that was a good way. But you know, but sometimes you are in a bad mood or like the other person is in a bad mood. 
It's true. But man, mostly all the time I try to talk to people nicer, you know? I got to almost hit the other guy with one paddleboard. A guy broke his leash and I went huh. talk to him. Like say, man, you shouldn't know stand up paddleboard here on the main peak you know, because it's pretty dangerous. And the guy understand, you know, but... So yeah, man, like some other people don't understand, you know, I seen a bunch of like paddleboards, like uh, right on the peak teaching lessons to like people have company here. And I try to be nice and talk to them. Hey, you should go teach paddleboard like in Garza or other breaks. And, you know, Guiones is like an open beach. And it, that's true. It is. And also like on it, the subject of paddleboards, there's people who are if they're very experienced and they're very good. I don't have any problem yeah, with them. Me, if me, they're teaching lessons at the main peak, that is, that's very, very dangerous. It's a man, I gotta, yeah, I was talking to the guy, like a local guy here the other day, actually. And he was like with like clients. They didn't know how to do. And I thought, hey, man, you shouldn't know, like, take them here. You know, this is, you know, this break is for surfing. And they say, you guys know, truly teaching lessons surfing here. He told me that because they know how to surf either. And I say, man, Paul, paddleboard is different than surfing. Yeah, uh, you know, it's yeah. more dangerous, more, bigger, bigger board, and to be honest, nobody do not. Everybody doing whatever people can do. You know, we are freedom, Costa Rica. Are we? Are you telling me this? Are you explaining why you bought your truck and now you're going everywhere now? <laughs> That's why. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main reason, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, and man, I been go to other break here, like fifteen minute drive. Uh huh. Nobody there good wave like just two guys on the lineup no fighting you can share and you, you can get an even better wave than guiones yeah, that's true just like 15 minute drive away you know dude that is completely true so i want to talk about your family a little bit because i've gotten to know them especially your dad um rosalina's a hilarious human being even when I could not speak Spanish at all, I still knew he was funny. You got to meet my dad, huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I've, met, that's I've done, cool. I don't know how many Mercy Home builds yeah. with your dad. And then also when, when you and I first became closer, it was when we were helping your sister. Yeah. Uh, yeah that was, that's when I got to know your whole family because I was over there all the time. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's, yeah, that's true. You, you know to know my family. I remember Edgar so, yeah, when man, he was tiny. Yeah, that's awesome. And your brothers. Yeah, my anyway, dad. But tell me your dad's story because he's, yeah, you would never expect to meet him. He's, and he never stops. Yeah. He never turns off. My dad is funny, man. He's a funny guy. Why? <laughs> what is, what, I don't what know, caused man, him? His spirit, you know, he's always like, he's always happy and making joke and his story. And yeah, I got opportunity to, to work with him. Well, you know, he's my dad. So he teach me a lot of stuff, you know, so I, he's super friendly guy and he's like funny guy. He's happy inside. Does he make your mom mad? Man, embarrassing too. <laughs> <laughs> both my mom is opposite than him right know? my mom my mom is super quiet she's and, very reserved yeah, very humble yeah. and very kind yeah she, but your dad will just i've yeah. seen your dad and a whole group of people say the most inappropriate hilarious jokes <laughs> i've ever and everybody laughing and every everyone's yeah, rolling man, it could be a hundred so degrees outside yeah, man, i love my dad man. he made me happy how's his leg man he's 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 been having a little problem with his leg you know his knees Mm -hmm. So uh, he's at home. He's he's been not working much lately, but yeah, he's he's at home doing some stuff. Sometimes he helped me out in my house too. Still he's, building my house, no finish yet. So he helped me a lot. He's a yeah, he's a hard worker. Yeah. I might stop by and say hi. Yeah, just surprise Any, him anytime. How's he, your brother's house? Did he get his house up right yeah, by there? He he built his own house and yeah, he's he's getting good. Well, congratulations to him. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm happy for him too. He have a kid too, like growing up. Man, the yeah. kids are having kids. Yeah, family's growing up. I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> so Santa Teresita, is it the same now as it was 10 years ago and 20 years ago? No. Or how is it changing? Well, more more houses, more people. They yeah. Also, they build a high school up, up there. Ah, uh, yeah. So a lot of more traffic. And more so that's cars. bringing a lot more people into mm -hmm. the neighborhood? Yeah. It seems like because it's not in Guiones or Palada, it, it's more away. I was thinking it would stay more kind of Costa Rican and more authentic. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's more local downtown, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not like a Guiones, like it's the, the tourist town. I have a question for you about Nosara. Do you feel that it's growing in a good way? Is it growing too fast? Is it too slow? Like, what's your take on Nosara's growth pattern? It's, it's growing fast and it's good and it's bad, you know. I like it and I don't like 50-50. This place is the bombing so fast. And what's the bad that you're seeing 
the lineup, <laughs> for example. <laughs> That's why you had to get a car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of more people on the water. And yeah, no, I don't know, maybe more like more criminal robber houses, mm. more broken houses, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, there's a lot more people to steal from. A lot more opportunity for yeah, thieves. a lot of more like fancy houses. You know, a long time ago here, it was like, uh, it was safe. You can leave your motorcycle with the mm. key on it or your car open. Right now, you not going to do that like on the beach. You know, you leave your motorcycle with the key. You can't come back. Could be not there. Yeah, well, that's some of the challenges of growth, right? Yeah. With growth comes problems, but it also brings opportunity and it gives people like you a that's, chance to open living stokes. That's the good thing. Yeah, that's the other good part. Like you said yeah, the so 50-50. 50-50. How does your family feel about it? Because most of your family does not work in tourism jobs. Do they? What like what's the, the Tico take from back in Nosara town like people who don't work in tourism one bigger part affect us like people like doesn't like work with tourists is you know is the price prices you know you know like grocery for example Mm -hmm. like the price same price the tourists pay we have to pay now right so things like that you know the people do can no work like and get like American money because a lot of now some prices they put like American price mm. like dollars you have to pay with dollars yeah that's true restaurants groceries all of that stuff it's it's pretty expensive to live here yeah for local people yeah it's pretty expensive to live here something I've noticed is people coming in from San Jose a lot of them they either have to live in Nosara town or you have the tourist areas Gilles yeah. Palada and there's a big price difference and there's a this it's just a different product and it's it's kind of confusing there's yeah. not a lot of long term rentals here yeah the rental is different yeah the rental is like for sure if you want to rent a house here in Gilles in Nosara the difference different but not the food, you know? <laughs> right. You go to the supermarket here in, in Guiones, you buy a, like a bice or racks, a rice, you go to Nosara, it's the same price, kind of. If we had to go down your Nosara likes and dislikes real quick, I know you like the surf and I know you're from here. So I think I know, I think I know what you like. I want to know what you dislike. The row, man. The rows in Nosara is embarrassing <laughs> for me, you know, and for tourists too. So bad, man. And. <sighs> That's Holes, a common dust, one. Yeah. Honestly, it's one thing I dislike, you know. Also, the garbage. Ah. The dumper, how yep. do you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, you garbage. Right. It's bad. You drive through there, man, and you see people sometimes dro- uh, through the garbage or the plastic bag right on the near of the road. On the side. Mm-hmm. Like r- right in front of the garbage, you know. The, at least we're making progress on the trash situation. I know, man. That's being a good thing. You know, the recycler program is being helping a lot. Yeah. We had Christian in not long ago. And the trash pickup being done by Nicoya now, mm-hmm. if people just pay for it, some good stuff. And now yeah. we have a, a real recycling program. Mm-hmm. That's being a good thing, you know, in Osara. Yeah. We, we need foreigners, visitors and residents and locals like Ticos, we need everyone to participate. It's, it's super important. Yeah, because it was the same thing like we were talking, the more grow up this town, the more problems going to... That's grow, right. More things going to grow up. You know? That's Even right. the garbage is a, it's a thing, you know, like if you, we don't control that, it's going to be bad. <laughs> I'd say it already is bad, so <laughs> now we need to control it. Hopefully it works out. What are you? some of your favorite places to hang out? Or actually, what are your... What are your three favorite restaurants? Man, in Nosara downtown, I like Rancho Tico. Mm. It's like a local food. Yep. Really good. Like They have everything. Everything down there. Menu's Actually, they huge. have everything. Yeah. Huge really do. menu. They have a, a huge selection. What do you yeah. like to get there? What are your favorite things? I like the chicken brief. Oh, oh, the, is it the pollo empanizada? Yeah. Uh-huh. The, yeah. That's a, Oh, I actually like that with, a uh, Yeah, with the, with the um, white sauce with mushroom. Yep. Love it, man. That's a good one. And then, yeah, man, I like the, I like the ceviche too down there. It's really good. Okay. So Rancho Tico, that's one. Yeah. What else? Uh, I like roses. I like roses here. It's like local food too in Guiones. Did you just get standard casado? Yeah. Love casado, you know. (laughs) And also, man, ten pies. Ten pies I like, man. The Hawaiian poke is really good. Ah, so the poke at at DSPS. Yeah. DSPS, me encanta. That's nice. I see you at Beach Dog a good bit. I like Beach Dog, but yeah, right now they make more like vegan or more like uh, vegetarian. Sometimes we, I cannot force to pay like a little bit more than than other places. Like Rosie's, you know, more like locals. Yeah, yeah, it's just. But yeah, Beach Dog is a good, good, good place, man. And the smoothies are really good and the. Yeah, Mike does a good job. Yeah, I all recommend of, a lot of beach talks. I like all of those places. They have a lot of restaurants here. Yeah. A bunch. A bunch, man. 
El Chivo, Good Tacos, it's not popular. La Luna. <laughs> Man, La Luna is really popular. Yeah. How could it not be though on the beach? <laughs> Hey, right. do you ever go eat at Olga's or Tonito's? Yeah, I love I love to Olga's. Yeah, I haven't been to Olga's. Like, it seems like it changes. Yeah, they have a new manager. Yeah, sometimes it's like awesome and great, and then sometimes not so much, and yeah. then sometimes it kind of seems like it bounces around. We happen that a lot. So it's good now. Yeah, now they have a good like. That's great. Good crew. That's you should great. go try. Yeah. I will. So, do you ever surf Palada much anymore? I've been surfing there like um, two weeks ago. I think it was a good swell. Do you think it's okay for gringos to go surf Palada? No. <laughs> Pelada is just like a local, just for local, you know. When is it okay for a gringo to surf at Pelada? On the night, on the dark. And the dark. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I like to go surf over there, but just not when it, not when it's crowded. Maybe if you're born in Costa Rica, but you're still white, could you do it then? Yeah, you can. All right, I think yeah. Elisha's in. My yeah, son, he yeah. gets, he could go. You guys are local. You know, Elisha grew up here, so he can. He's part of the... No, you know, everyone can serve there. Whatever. No, but yeah. Locals but... are like, you know, that it's a point break. And a point break is... We try to keep more protecting from like... Sure, of course. Like, Guiones is okay because it's a huge beach break, so... I'm noticing a lot more... As, as Nosara gets very popular, people now talk about all of the waves. When I first came in, we talked about Guiones, and that was it. There was no mention of Palada, oh, River Mouth, Ocinal, Garza, any of these places. But now that everything's on the internet and now you have social media, there's pictures of all these places yeah. everywhere. There's there's no, no there's no secrets. It's <laughs> those days are over. Yeah. But I still remember when we came here, like we'd never talk about the river mouth. Never. Never. We didn't want anyone to know. I guess with Google Earth, I guess all that went away. Do you ever get on Google Earth and like go check out and look for different breaks and no, different really. places? Yeah. No. Never you gotta done do that it. sometime. Yeah, it's hell. Well, also, we have, we have an earthquake. That big earthquake we had, it changed the brakes. Mm -hmm. Like the ride at Garza changed a great deal after that earthquake. Yeah, man, all this point in Witches Rock, that way it's like, it's not working anymore, I hear. It's different. But that also means there's new waves yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, it changed a lot. It's been changing a lot since that earthquake. Even Pelada, yeah. A lot of ways changing. See? One time I was paddling, I was on a stand-up paddleboard. And I was paddling from Palada over to Guione. So I was just, it was October. The waves weren't good anywhere. I was just horsing around. And a big set came through when I was in between the rocks. And I was riding a, this is this is a long time ago. Mm -hmm. When SUPs kind of first came out, it was huge. And I had a calf leash on. And a wave came, hit me, knocked the leash off. The leash went around my foot. The whole, the board's gone. And I was just stuck out there. Out by the outside rocks at North Guiones. No one knew where I was. And the current was so strong because the river at North Guiones was running because it was mm. October. And I could, I was just stuck going in circles. I, I couldn't get in. Yeah, man. He said some beef rib down there when it's, when it's big. What is the most scared you've ever been in the water? Man, and where? Where? Anywhere. Like for me, that was the most scared I ever was because well, I was just thinking, it's like I have two kids. What? I'm, no one knows where I am. I really am in a tough situation. Like it just hit me. Like I was scared. Yeah. And uh, I'm asking you, what's the most scared that you've ever been in the water? Was it surfing? Was it in Guiones? Mm -hmm. Was it somewhere else? Like no, no, it was surfing. Yeah, man, I got, I got, I got a bad history. Well, no bad history, but um, I was in Playa Hermosa. I went, you know, in Haco. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you, as soon as you said Hermosa, I couldn't help but laugh. Yeah, man, Hermosa is pretty heavy break. It's you know, like super strong break, like. The white water can knock you down. It's It'll of, hold you down too. And it's a short break, you know. Waste is not like it's not like you know it's like a big beach break. So I got there one morning, six a.m. and it was dead low tide. Nobody surfing in low tide in Hermosa mm -hmm. because they 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 know you know Hermosa is it's impossible to surf in low tide. Boogie borders, you know, and like some like really good experience surfer, but Hermosa mm -hmm. like low tide is like. Psh, Super heavy, short break. Mm. So, but I saw the waves. It was perfect, man. I saw barreling speeding like early in the morning, but it was low tide. And it was not that big. It was maybe like six, seven feet, maybe eight feet, like head high. But it was perfect leaning. So I paddled out and like big, like big set came. It took me like 15 minutes to get out. And it was, the way it was so short, but it was so rough. It was as well, like, um, heating, like, mm -hmm. It was, it was, the, the waist was getting bigger. So anyway, I paddled out in my first way. I tried to catch you with like big drop. So I pulled back. I turned around and it was another way come behind and got me. 
I tried to dog dive that way, breaking like one meter in front of me. Oh man. And exploding. So I tried to dog dive that wave and it was not the smart thing to do. I should have ditched my ball. So the the white water took the the ball from my hand and like mm-hmm. took me under the water and spin me around like for like like uh, 15 seconds under the water. That's, man, that's and a I, long I, time I, under the water. Man, I, tr- I, I came out and luckily my leash didn't break. Get on my board and try another wave came. Dish my board. Same thing rolling me over again. And then I grab my board again and another wave hit me. Man, like I like five waves, like dishing my board. And I was like out of breath. You know, I started feeling like weak and and then luckily the set stopped. But I was like, I was like almost like almost like pass out you know i was like a little so weak and i was like a little bit like no was more people surfing it was super early so i i the set stopped and i was like between on the right on the impact zone so i didn't know if i paddle out or paddle in you know in that situation i didn't know what to do i know exactly what you're talking about and, and, oh man yeah man, so what I, happened so did you just take a breath and i take a breath and i paddle out I paddled out and I was waiting to one way to go in. <laughs> now, I, I got scared, man. Like, I got so much respect for Player Mosa. Yeah, me yeah, too. You, you, people, and do you know Terrazas? Yeah. So it was at low tide Terrazas. It was the year, it was 07. Elisha was born that year. And we were staying down there because it was closer to San Jose. I went out, same story kind of, except. Low tide. <laughs> I tried to duck dive a wave. It didn't work. It flipped me. Up. I'm holding the board. And then it land, except it's not deep, and I was stuck on the bottom, and the board was on top of me, and I, I, it seems like you just get right up. The board would would, but yeah, would fl- it didn't. That the board way it, like so stayed much power, there, yeah. And I was out of air because I blew it all all the air out when I landed, and then I'm just stuck out of air and I can't move. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh god, it can't end like this. And uh, I got up, and I immediately went in, and I just sat there and was thankful to be alive. <laughs> No, man, yeah, Hermosa is, is strong. I think right. everyone comes to Costa Rica and has a near-drowning story at <laughs> Hermosa. What was that? I forgot the name of the video. There's a video series that they used to do. Um, I think the Garson's guys used to do it. But at the beginning of the video, it says it has a guy, like, coughing out water and and, and uh, he just <laughs> broken board. And it says, Hermosa drowning victor, victim 9 million. <laughs> Everybody yeah. has a Hermosa story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I haven't seen that video yet. Favorite wave anywhere in the country? Pavones. I like Pavones. Yeah. I've never been. Pavones is a nice uh, left-hander, you know? It's a point break. Super long left. It's super fun, right? Easy surf wave. You can surf really? Pavones 10 feet, 11 feet. I'm scared I would like it too much. Yeah, man. <laughs> you, will move, you will move there if you like. That's what I'm worried about. It's a nice little town, too. People are super nice there. The some locals of, are nice, too. Yeah, some of our friends live down there. They yeah. really enjoy it. I like Pavones. And, man, I like Guiones. Guiones is, you know, that's where I grew up and I learned how to surf, too. So it's pretty consistent. Yeah, right? I was going to say, I think for consistency and warm yeah. water, what Gu- wave is better? I can't think of any. Yeah, Guiones is the more consistent, for sure. That's the thing be- between Pavones, too. Pavones is half time of the year you know like mm, south it's swell it's like super south you right know? but the here like good thing about Guinness is that we can go south north east what about nicaragua what's your favorite wave up there man i got opportunity to surf playground and lance left mm-hmm. like kind of like secret spot in nicaragua man amazing waves are really good there. yeah yeah really, really good down there you know colorado is it's really good too yeah it's pretty good i only go to the north now where like up up past Shenandega, up to the mm-hmm. boom Shenandega. i've been there too that's a, that's like my vacation happy place if nosara ever gets too crowded and too crazy you go there that's that's yeah man but go. nicaragua this this is like um san juan del sur or this or these places start getting like guiones right now yeah san juan del sur <laughs> is not for me it's too crowded it's done papoyo papoyo is kind of it's amazing waves yeah. but it seems like it's there's no secret Every, it's no, crowded anymore. and yeah. it has a little bit harder edge to it like the, and the people, locals are more like that's what i'm saying the, the, the people, people aren't so nice there up in the north though i love it it's it's like nosara 20 30 years ago so i've, I've really enjoyed going there whenever i can yeah. but uh i hope things work out in nicaragua i guess we'll see in the meantime at least 
the good thing about having the crowds here is that you can make a living and you and I, I can make a living and we can live here. Yeah, part of the living. <laughs> I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> You've had a lot of personal things happen recently. Why don't you update us on, about some of that? I'm pretty locally, you know, I find my, my, well, in Spanish, we, we say mi media naranja mm -hmm. is like my half or orange. Mm -hmm. Like it's my a beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Her I name didn't is, know the media naranja part though. So yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. It's like a, a, a say in Spanish, you know? So it's like when you find your couple, you know? So luckily, yeah, I find this girl. Her name is Gabby. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, I married her like not too long ago, like four or five months ago. It's a pretty big deal. Being one of the best thing I never happened. Yeah, this so, being like four months so far, like super happy. So married life is working good for you. Yeah, man, that's one like thing change you know in my life. I I I've been hang, I've been with Gabby for like over two years. Too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we just get married and man, she's a super nice girl, super sweet, and we're doing pretty well. We build our own house too. So that's what I was getting at. You got married, you built a house, you bought a car, <laughs> you started a business. You got anything else to do, man? You have some twins on the way? Or? Yeah, no, no on the way. <laughs> not yet, not yet. But Any yeah, other it's big gonna projects? be the next next thing. Yeah, I want to have a kid for sure, man. I love kids. We'll all be excited. But, but about not yet, that. not yet. You have some more waves to catch. Probably. I see her up on the north side sometimes at the Gilded Surf Club. Uh, who, Gabby? Uh huh. Yeah, she worked there. She's a actually she's a surf instructor too, and she's one of the instructors at the Surf Club and Gilded Iwana. Man, she's she's a really good surfer too, and super lucky. She, she's super. She's She's just nice. Yeah. Like she's just one of those people you meet. She's just nice. Yeah, I'm super lucky to have her in my life. Congratulations, man. Thank you. So it Thank sounds like me. overall family's <laughs> going good. The personal life's going good. Yeah. You have a new business and you're getting it going. And yeah, you're man. Get, you got bailed at Marbella the other day, which mm. I'm very jealous of. <laughs> yeah, um, man. You know, I'm pretty lucky. You know, Psst, I can't you know, ask more from. Let's let's do this. For anybody who wants to find you or who might want to hire you or, or go on a trip with you, how can they track you down? What's the best way to find you? Instagram, Facebook. Okay. Email. So social media. Social media. Yeah. And I do. Is your web your website's up? Yeah, it's up. Okay. I got I am in TripAdvisor now too, so people can read some of the review other people been nice. doing. Like TripAdvisor help a lot. Living stock, no Sarah. I got all all the social media media going on. Right on, they, man. They can find me everything. You know, email, phone number. I do all. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, your English is fantastic. Sus, sus <laughs> English is incredible, man. In serio? Yeah, it's, it's muy profundo. <laughs> Mucho mejor de mi español. <laughs> Gracias. I'm working on it. Estoy trabajando, pero ahí vamos poco a poco. Nah, it's functionando. <laughs> Gracias. Es ayuda con clientes. Es, es más oportunidad para ti. Sí, sí, también. Sí, igual trato algunas veces de hablar español con algunas personas que hablan mm. español. Que están aprendiendo español o quieren practicar. Es, es otra oportunidad. Es sí. maestro de es idiomas. Exactamente. <ríe> Igual, sí. Yo trato, sí, yo trato de mejor si alguien habla español, como de hablar en español con ellos siempre. Sí. O um, enseñar nuevas palabras también. Sí. Hey, tu español está mejorando ah, también. Estoy improvando. <ríe> Felicidades. <ríe> Gracias, amigo. Sí, Pero... yo, yo recuerdo dos años atrás no hablaba mucho español. No, yo tengo mucho ver vergüenza. ¿Vergüenza? Vergüenzado. ¿Cómo se dice? Vergüenza. Ya, yeah, yo tengo mucha vergüenza. Es muy ocupado. Ah, es falta de práctica. Exactamente. Normalmente es, uh, uh, estoy hablando con los gringos, con mi trabajo, Pero, siempre, cada sí, día. Sí. Necesito hablar más con el jardinero también. Sí, sí, sí. sí. Y, y todos. Y todo. El mecánico. <risa> con Peña, con Peña, conoce Peña. Oh, sí, sí. Que no sé todos los, los mecánicos, mecánicos de Costa Rica. En serio. Yo, eso, todos. Ay, eso no, es eso, muy divertido. Es otro subjecto. Los, yeah. los carros. How do you say cars come to Nosara to die? Los carros vienen a Nosara para murió. Perfecto. Is that like it? Yeah. <laughs> I really believe that. I think cars come here to die. <laughs> so your red truck's nice and enjoy it, but. Make some money so next time you get another big red truck. Gracias, sí, claro. Yeah, man. Well, hey, thanks for everything. It's great to have you in, buddy. Thank you for inviting me and, yeah, Dude. big help, you know. Pleasure. We'll have you back. Maybe next time you can go give me a lesson on backside tube riding. <laughs> for sure, man. I would love to. Let's make a tour trip. Sounds like a good get idea. Get some good barrels. All right, thanks, bro. Thank you. My pleasure. Pura vida. <laughs>